Welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And today we're going to talk about something very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorites, the mini botanical tulips. Mm -hmm. And as every plant, there's obviously a little bit of a history behind it. Pam is going to tell you about that. And we also will introduce a few of our faves out of the whole varieties that we offer. Exactly. Now the mini botanical tulips are also known as species tulips and the reason for that is they are actually the tulip that most mimics what you would find in the wild and where they grow naturally are in areas of Persia, uh, in the mountainous regions of Turkey and they have a very very interesting history. In fact they were the flower for the sultans of the time. In fact it was a much uh, uh, coveted flower. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely a status symbol and if you look back in history you'll see that that flower image on a lot of the pottery, a lot of the tiles that are traditional to Persia and Turkey, uh, much much loved and as I said very coveted. But in the 16th century interestingly enough a couple of those bulbs actually made their way to Europe, uh, specifically to Holland and from there well you know, history tells us now what's now happened. A very sort of uh, unknown flower has now become one of the world's most loved flowers. But there are certain reasons why you want to maybe choose mini botanicals for your garden situation. And uh, what would be a, a, probably the main reason you'd want to pick a mini botanical for the garden? Well, you know what, looking at, at my uh, idea, when I looked at tulips, I always loved tulips because it's just, for me, it's the perfect flower. But then I was looking into what can I use for a ground cover. Mm -hmm. And that was the main reason when I went back to the mini botanicals because most of them are very short. They're between four inches and 10 inches. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when, you, when you use them, you don't just have like four or five in a, in a pot uh, because you don't focus just on the, a single flower or on the hybridizing of it. You focus on more like the, the mass that, yes. that is. So I would definitely recommend them to have like 10 or 20 or even 30 in one space because it really will fill in the spot but not just in a green uh, matter like a, an ivy or something mm -hmm. that is really taking over your space but something that blooms and that's not so common in the ground covers. Right and they do naturalize quite well and make these beautiful little clumps and we should point out as well when you if you've never actually received and grown mini botanical tulips you will be surprised by the size and we've <laughs> got some here and they are, they're just like the cutest little, things. Oh, I just love it, they're like little miniature tulips. Like if you look at here's a, a traditional tulip bulb, quite large, a couple of inches across, and here you have this beautiful little mini botanical. They're nice and hard, uh, they're just an interesting, they almost remind me of an iris bulb. They're mm -hmm. very similar to that. Same thing, you plant them point up to the sun, and the little roots, if you can see them, down in the soil, usually go down about four inches, four to six inches, and plant them in a nice, as we say, sort of a nice clump, groupings of ten or so, make the best effect. Now, we want to talk about some of our favorites. Yes, and I'm I know... talking about the best effect, actually. Yes. I visited Wendy in her uh, garden, and she has a beautiful uh, garden, and there was one spot, and it just kind of drew me right there, and it was uh, the, sh the Preston Shogun was uh, blooming there, mm -hmm. and it drew me there because that that one is like beautiful orange mm -hmm. and it looked like she has little orange light bulbs in the ground because they kind of came through a ground cover, mm -hmm. a ground cover. she has a beautiful big huge cedar trees in, in her yard and obviously there's a lot of green stuff mm -hmm. in the, and they just poked right through like little uh, light bulbs so I went there and I started taking pictures and I felt like oh my god I can't stop taking pictures because they looked awesome and they were open some were bright open like a little orange star some were still closed they are multi flower and uh, and the best part is actually that they they basically grew uh, like grow not just in in our area where it's uh, pretty warm but also three to eight I mean that is so uh, three to eight yes and they they really do as you said because of the color and the multiply they really command your attention which brings us to an interesting little fact that the Preston's Shogun um, Shogun in Japanese means general as in army general. So if you keep that in mind, something that's really going to command your attention, that shogun, that general, mm -hmm. is going to really pull some focus in your garden and I guarantee you won't be disappointed with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that one is a little bit taller than the other ones. It's about 10 inches. Mm -hmm. So that probably uh, helped f uh, this little short flower coming through the greenery. So if you right. have 10 inches kind of winding through and then open up like these little orange umbrellas. Just right. beautiful. Well, I am very partial to partial rather to one called Pulchella Chinese Coral. 
Now, don't let the name fool you in terms of coral. You might think, oh, an apricot color or something mm -hmm. on that. No, it's, hello, purple. <laughs> My favorite color, as you all know, pink, purple. I'm kind of that kind of a gal. And I love this one because it is an unexpected color. It's not one you often find in the mini botanical range. Usually they're yellows or the oranges, which are all beautiful. This is a real standout because it is purple. Like the Preston Shogun, it's also a multi-flowering one, so you're going to get multiple blooms per stem. It grows a little shorter, about six inches or so, but for best effect, absolutely plant them in groups of 10 or more in nice little clumps. After a number of seasons, you're definitely going to notice that they begin to naturalize, not uh, multiply. spread, not multiply like weeds, you know, but they do spread and they are wonderful. And we should point out as well, if you are an urban gardener and you're looking for something to make a real show in a container, the mini botanical tulips are really a wonderful choice. They're early to mid-blooming. They don't grow very tall, so they're perfect for those container situations. Mm -hmm. I remember it was a few years ago I had the desistamen tata, which mm -hmm. is my next one. Uh, it's a beautiful yellow with a uh, white edge. Actually, you see it right here in the picture. That's, that's right. That's a, And I dressed myself just to, to kind of match <laughs> my, my favorite flower. And I had it in my backyard. I have a huge terracotta container and there's actually a fig tree in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the fall, I thought, you know, I want something in the spring until all my herbs and stuff come up. So I put the desistamen tata in there and it filled the whole space mixed up with the blue uh, muscari which is yeah. a beautiful combination blue with the yellow and the white and that one is also very uh, interesting because as soon as the Sun comes out it opens up and it you know because of these edges it's that beautiful little umbrella with the white edges uh, and, it's, and when the Sun goes down or when it gets a little bit more shady mm -hmm. then it closes again I yeah. think it's totally fun something yeah. like that and I think maybe actually Wendy brought up this point it was interesting she said maybe that helps with the longevity of those blooms is because they are closed at they night. protect themselves. So they protect them. themselves mm -hmm. and then they open up again in the sun. So it allows for that flower to last even longer. So don't be fooled by their size. They often are some of the most longest blooming flowers in the spring. Yeah. And the final choice for me is one called Little Princess. I do love it. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> I consider myself to be a bit of a princess, but that's okay. Um, but I love Little Princess because it reminds me actually, if you're familiar with a tulip called Appledorn, which is a very traditional red tulip. It reminds me of that, but in miniature form. And the reason for that is because it has beautiful red petals. In the center, there's this bright yellow ring, and then right at the very, very heart, it's very dark purple, almost black. So you get this multicolored, beautiful flower that is a real show-off. And even though it's called Little Princess, she does have a bit of an ego. And so I would put her in a very prominent spot, again, maybe in a container raised up a little bit. So when it does open up and you see those beautiful colors, you'll be able to enjoy its magnificence. And good for zone three to eight and early to mid bloomer, grows about six inches high as most of the mini botanicals. I encourage you to try these in your garden if you haven't already. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Absolutely, and I think because they are so short, they are perfect for a little tabletop uh, container. Uh, a lot of people only have a balcony uh, to work with, but uh, it's a showstopper. It's, mm -hmm. Even if you just have it right outside your patio door, if you have a, a pot with all these little tiny flowers blooming and laughing at you, mm -hmm. uh, smiling at you, uh, it's, it's, a real, uh, it's a real treat. And we do have more than the, the three or four that we just mentioned. We have yes. saxatillis and just yes. different kinds, but just check them out. Choose for the color that you like, and mm -hmm. obviously some are a little bit different in height between four and ten inches. Exactly. So. If oh. you have never tried them before, or if you have, and you're a real mini botanical tulip lover, uh, you can win one of our multi uh, packs. We have actually a, a, a mix. A mix. Mm -hmm. It's a mini botanical mix, and we're going to be giving away three sets of those this week. The question we want you to answer this week, as part of the Botanist Garden Club, is what does shogun mean? Now, if you were watching earlier and really <laughs> listening, you know the answer to that question. If not, you're going to have to spool back a little bit, watch it again. Send that answer to gardenclub at botanis.com. 
And tomorrow we will do that draw and we will be sending out right away, just in time for fall planting, three sets of those mini botanical mixes for three people to try in their gardens. And who knows, it could be going to Nova Scotia or Prince Edward Island or Ontario or Saskatchewan. Or anywhere. <laughs> who knows? We have viewers from all across the country. So please do enter the draw and we look forward to announcing those winners soon. In the meantime, I sure hope you're having a wonderful fall season. We sure are. Absolutely. I love fall. I love fall too. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, happy gardening to you all and uh, have a lot of fun out in the garden. Thanks for watching so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.